Are you struggling to get that tight low end in your mixes where the sub and the kick has got loads of separation and it's not eating up too much headroom on the master channel? Have you tried doing complicated EQ adjustments and still not getting there? Well, I've got a really simple trick for you that I use in every single project that I've done for myself and also mixes that I've done for clients. That works every single time and it's something that I just use on every project. So it's called the bass ducker. That's the, the rack. That's what I've called it. Um, it is taking the idea of using sidechain. So you've probably done that already, but it's not always the best option because sometimes it just sounds too much. So you get that kind of Daft Punk um, ducking effect. And for a lot of tracks, it doesn't work unless you're making that French house or you just want that kind of EDM sound. So what I've done is I created a bass ducker which splits up the frequencies and you are just ducking the sub frequencies below 100 hertz or wherever you set the cutoff point and then the top frequencies are left alone to come through in the mix. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I'm going to show you how to make it, but I'm also going to explain why it's important to do this and show you an example that has no bass ducking and what that does on our meters on the master channel and then with bass ducking how we can control that low end and make a better uh, mix and it's going to give us a more powerful mix down and master as well when we control those low frequencies so let's get started and the projects i'm using for the source material is from the previous tutorial where i talked about building up effects with ableton echo and go and check that out if you haven't watched it already so yeah we're going to use that as source material but i'm just going to concentrate on the kick and the bass let's have a listen to them in solo so it's a nice little um kick and bass sound but what i've noticed is that i've actually programmed these pretty well in the sense that the bass doesn't really hit when the kick comes in there's a little bit of um overlap there so you can see there and also this kick won't stop there it'll actually run over so i can show you um the bass ducker in this scenario where it's quite subtle and you'd probably think oh we don't need to use the bass ducker but i'll show you on the meters why it's useful in this scenario and then what i'll do after that is i will bring this bass over so that most of the hits land at the same time as the kick and then you'll see how the bass ducker is super useful for that scenario, definitely. So what I'm going to do is put on the bass ducker, quickly explain what it is. We're going to get around to making this from scratch as well, and I'll show you how to do that. So you can see here I've got sub and high. On this one, the high frequencies come through untouched. Apart from they are being filtered, so we're not letting any of the lows through. And on the sub channels, this is parallel processing. On the sub one, you can see I am isolating the low end below one, two, three hertz in this example. So let's have a listen to that. And then what I'm doing is adding the side chain there, which is taking audio from the kick. So you can see we're ducking quite hard there. Now what I'm going to do is bring in the kick and show you what the kick looks like on the master channel. So I use Pro Q3 on all my mixes and I actually mix to this line visually. I'll show you that in another tutorial soon. It's a game changer for me. I use I use my ears. I've, you can see I've got um, acoustic treatment in my room, but I like to use Pro Q3 as my analyzer because it tilts uh, the frequencies horizontally and it allows me to mix to a line and that'll get me 90 to 95% there. So it's a great little trick. Um, let me know in the comments if some of you are doing that already. And also let me know if it's something you want to know more about, and I'll do a tutorial on that very soon. So let's have a look at the kick first. So you can see the kick, the fundamentals I've mixed to the line near enough. And then if we look at the sub, you can see the subs just below. That's kind of usually where I put my subs. But if we play these together, keep an eye on that low end and look for jumps in volume. So let me just check that I haven't got, yes, I've got my side chain on. So you can see that it definitely works. Right, okay, now look for the jumps. So that last kick, when it goes da ding at the end, uh, let me isolate that one. It's this one here, the fourth one. Look at that jump there compared to that with no bass there. So that fourth one, it really jumps out, right? And that's because we've got some overlap there. So you can see the sub is still going there while the kick comes in and that gives us more volume on the master. What that means is um, in terms of the final mix down and the final master, when I send this to my master engineer, it's gonna have to push harder with the compressor and it's just gonna create more um, 
more of that kind of like ducking with a compressor. So I want to kind of clean that up before I send it off. So yeah, let's take a look at the ducking now. So yeah, with that side chain on, you can see I've got a much more consistent level because it's getting those sub frequencies right out of the way of um, that kick. So what I'm gonna do now is a more extreme version. Let's bring this back. So we now have the sub hitting at the same time as the kick. And what I'm gonna do is show you the levels again without the ducking on. I mean, look at the state of that. <laughs> That's terrible. But, you know, we've got the ducker, so we put that on. And it's just so much more controlled. It's just as controlled, pretty much, as the subtle example before we put them on top of each other. So let's turn it off again. You can hear it as well. It just boosts that fundamental frequency. And that's because the kick and the bass are hitting at the same fundamental frequency. My kick is tuned to um, the tuning of the project. So the reason why it's important to split the frequencies, as I've already mentioned, is that we can keep the high part of the bass intact. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna grab that compressor from the sub part and I'm not gonna move actually, I'm gonna bring it over and turn the bass ducker off. And now we can do the classic way and I'll show you the difference. So a lot of people get their bass and they just slap a side chain on. So this is without the um, side chain. And you can see the jumps we've got on the master there. And then a lot of people just put the compressor on with the side chin. It doesn't sound too bad, granted, because it's creating this nice push and pull, but sometimes you don't want that. So with the bass ducker, we might want to keep those top frequencies always um, kind of jumping out on the kick. When the kick comes in, we want that bass to come out as well. So by splitting them up like this, We've got that consistent kind of push with the bass there, dun, 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 instead of it ducking and we're losing the transients. So yeah, we're able to control that sub and also let the highs come through as normal. So now I'm gonna show you how to build this rack from scratch. If you can't be bothered with that, if you haven't got the time in your hands to build it yourself and you wanna just get on with creating tracks and you wanna drop the straight into your project, you can download the Sableton projects and all of the samples and racks involved by joining my Patreon. The link for that is in the video description below. So there's more benefits as well. So have a look at the description in Patreon and see what else you get for a monthly subscription. So let's move on to building this bass ducker from scratch. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the bass and I've turned off that bass ducker. I'm gonna build it from scratch. And the first thing to talk about is the EQ choice. So instead of using Ableton's EQA, I'm actually gonna use Fab filters Pro Q3. The sound quality is so much better. I have actually a bead these in a bass rack, done the exact same settings, and I lost, seem to have lost frequencies and weight using Ableton's EQ8. And they just seem to be more phasing issues and artifacts. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've experienced that as well with Ableton's EQ. I much prefer using Fab Filter Pro Q3. It's brilliant, it's such a good EQ. So what I'm gonna do is bring the first one up and I'm gonna switch this from zero latency to natural phase. Now, if you wanna know a little bit more about that, let me know in the comments and I'll do a video on this, but if you just hover over this, it'll give you a description of what, what each of those are. I found that going to natural phase works better for this application of splitting up sub and bass frequencies with less artifacts. It's just a better quality. So what I'm gonna do now is right click on the plugin, group it, open up the chains, um, duplicate this chain, so just click on it and then press Command D. The top one is gonna be sub, and the bottom one is gonna be high, or mid-high. And what I need to do next is split the frequencies up. So on the first one, what I'm gonna do is drop in a low pass, and let's put this at around, what I could do actually is double click that. Let's put it around 130, let's try that. And I actually want to change this to a 24 dB as well and just change the Q. Yep, it's already on one, so that's fine. So what I want to do is just capture that frequency there, not the highs. So I'm not trying to keep this one um, within this core. I just want to focus on that sub frequency there. And that's why I go for a 24 dB cut as well, because it just it's a sharper curve as opposed to the 12 like this. 
which lets more of these frequencies in. So 24, and then you probably guessed already, but on the high one, you just want to go in there and do a high cut and match the frequency. So on this one, it was 136.27, uh, 136.27. It's the quickest way of doing it. And then have a listen to that one. Have a listen to them both. And then it'd be with the rack off and then back on again. And I might want to budge these up a little bit more. So let's go for 140. And actually, probably why it doesn't sound right is that on this one, I need to change that to a 24 dB. So let me just go ahead and do that. So yeah, it sounds fine, that. So try this with the Ableton EQ8. And then A, B, and notice the difference. It is ridiculous. It just loses everything. Um, so yeah, Pro-Q3 is the one for this. And then what I'm going to do next is go back to the sub one. And you can do this after the rack, but I always tend to put in um, a high pass. And I'm just going to go for around 20 hertz, maybe a little bit higher. And for that one, actually, 12 dB is the better approach, I think, um, for doing high cuts at such a low frequency. So it's a much much more natural um, curve. Sometimes with a 24 dB, again, it kind of creates um, artifacts and resonances. So yeah, for low high passes, I usually go for just the 12 dB uh, cut. So we'll go for that one there. And the next thing to do is to drop in that compressor so we could side chain the sub channel. So I'm going to bring in a compressor, drop it into the sub chain after the Pro-Q3. I'm going to solo that sub, press the little triangle to open up the side chain panel, click side chain, take audio from the kick, go into one of these two windows. I'm going to go on this one and just bring that threshold down. The other thing to take note of is the release. So you can change the release to get different kind of release times, which will kind of change the groove and the feel of it. But what I'm going to do is just bring that release right down so it follows um, the curvature of the waveform of the kick. So you can see if we bring this release up, slows it down, but what I want to do is just have quite a fast release because I don't want it to like groove too much. I just want it to basically pull down when the kick's coming through and that's it. It's just a very surgical um, side chain. So around there works quite nicely. Let's have a listen. And then turn it off. So again, you'll see this more than you will hear it. So if we look at the master again, turn it off. So volume jumps and then hardly any volume jump with that one. So that's pretty much it for the bass docker. But what I'm going to do now is show you a few bonus tips to take the rack further so you can save it as a rack. And there's also some controls to speed up the process. So the first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the macro window and we're going to map the frequencies. So the first frequency I want to map is this one here. So I'm going to go map. I'm going to map this to macro one. And I'm going to set a minimum and a maximum. So for the minimum, I'm going to go for around, let's keep checking on here to see where it is. Let's go for around there. So I'm just going to write six on there. And then for the maximum, we don't want to go too high. So let me just check that. 89. Oops, I'm on the wrong one there. 293. Let's put it around... What's that at now? So that's at 128. So I just need to go, let's go 7.5 on here. And that'll give us 181. Yeah, that'll do. Right, so what do we put there? We put 6 and 7.5. So what we need to do now is go to the, the high one and click on this again. Map that to macro one and just copy the settings. So 6.0, 7.5. And that should work. So what, hap what happens now is if we go to the sub, um, EQ, bring that open and change this knob. You'll see it moves the frequencies of both of them. So it means I can dial it in much quicker rather than having to go in and set them for both individually and copy them over. So that's the first little trick. The second trick is to 
basically um, group the whole chain. So group the whole fin so it puts all inside another effects rack. And then what we need to do is go to the macro settings in this one and we need to map that first knob to this one to carry it over. And now I'm just going to close all that down. Forget about that for now. And now we can control the frequencies from this knob here. But what I'm going to do is drop in another Pro Q3 after the bass ducker effect. So let me just label this so it makes sense. So this is the bass ducker effect here. Close that down. It's all contained in there. And then we've carried over the knob for the frequencies. And then we've put an extra EQ after the bass ducker. So whatever I do on this one, it's going to affect the whole frequency range of the low and the high. And what I want to do here is create a bit of a bump like this. And I want to map the frequency of that. So I'm going to boost it by maybe like 1 dB. And I'm going to map the frequency to this knob as well. And I need to go into the old one now. And just look at that again. So it was 6 and 7.5. And I'm just going to do the same again, but on this one. So let me just go in here. Let me just map that again. Right, there we go. So it was 6 and 7.5. Right, now you're probably wondering why I'm doing this. And maybe I'm being a little bit OCD with this, but this is just, it's just the way I am. I'm just really to the point with stuff and I want to make sure it's right. So with this, you'll notice that if I, if I marry these up, you can see that what we get, where these points meet, we get a dip. So I might have to go up a little bit more than that. What I'm doing is I'm compensating by putting that back in with this final bit of EQ. So where them two meet and they go like this, I've got this gap here. I just want to fill that gap and push the frequencies back up in that area. There's no frequencies there, but in some cases there is. With certain bases, there's more harmonics and you do get harmonics that get ducked with this technique. So I'm just um, filling that gap back in. Probably want to go to about 1.5, I reckon. Let me just line these back up again. So it was around around there. So you can see, yeah, we're just boosting that again. Maybe that's a little bit too high. And that's pretty much it. Just a little bit of compensation at the end there. Now we can call the main uh, rack, we can call that base ducker now. And what we can do is we can go ahead and save that. In fact, first of all, let's go to that one and put frequency. And I just had a thought, if you want to take this further, I mean, to be fair, I just kind of like pulling the threshold down here because I want to see the meters. But you could map that threshold to a macro so you can use a macro instead. But I'm not going to go I'm not going to go and do that. I'm just going to basically adjust that when I come in um, to the base ducker. The other thing worth noting as well is when you put this into a new project, you need to then go into the sidechain section and select the kick in the new project and then obviously adjust the settings. So all we need to do now is just save it. And it's a really simple process. You basically just go to the save icon. You can see I've already saved the base ducker there, but this one's got a one after it. And then you can right click that and put it in a folder. So you can see the old base ducker. I'm just gonna get rid of that one. Base ducker there, I've saved it in my tools folder. And it just means when I come to a new project, I just drag that base ducker in change the side chain to kick, adjust the threshold and the release and also the frequency and I'm aware that's it, easy. Um, if you can't be bothered to do this, like I said, go and join the Patreon and you can just download these effect racks as I build them for the tutorials. So drop me a comment below and let me know if you found this useful or if you have a better way of doing this or if you just simply have any questions or ideas for tutorials. Also let me know that as well and I will respond as swiftly as possible. The other thing I'd like to say is hit the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with the content that I'm pushing out on a weekly basis. And also, if you want to learn more and you want to update your production game, then I would recommend going ahead and watching this next video which is packed full of useful tips and tricks to help you progress.